It's the first time he's given a detailed account, an account that Chicago police have said has been consistent. He hasn't changed his story. They also said it's credible. Police have said that, and also that he has been very cooperative. It's been two weeks since that night in Chicago, and he, we, we talked for about an hour, and there's so much more of the interview that's going to be on Nightline. You saw the whole thing? Just about all of it, yeah. We, it's the whole, whole half hour of Nightline. Powerful. It really is. Very powerful. Yeah. Right, great job, Robin. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for clicking. I have to apologize for the lack of content over the last couple weeks. I've been down with a bad cold after being bombarded with coughing snotty kids at Thanksgiving. Now we're gonna go way back to 2019 when network and cable media were doing their part to help a washed up actor perpetrate a hoax, claiming he had been attacked by two white Trump supporters who he said tied a noose around his neck and then said, this is MAGA country. The story was just so stupid and goofy that most of us knew it was BS from the start. But the media, being who they are, just ate it up without even a shred of investigation. Why? Because it conformed to their narrative and biases. They literally fall for these kind of hoaxes over and over, and in doing so have actually incentivized people to keep doing it. Finally, three years later, he's on trial and it's not going good for him. But I've noticed something very predictable about their reporting or lack thereof on this trial. Check it out and see if you notice. The actor is expected to take the stand in his own defense. Last week, two brothers testified that Smollett paid them to stage a racist and homophobic attack against him back in 2019. Smollett is accused of lying to police about it. Did you catch that? Not a single mention of the fact he claimed his attackers were white MAGA Trump supporters. So it shouldn't surprise you that now they're trying to rewrite history by withholding important details. A tactic that we all know they use on a variety of topics, like cop shootings, for example, which is why you get riots in Kenosha when the shooting was 100% legitimate and everybody still thinks that Blake is dead. Over at ABC, they skipped around the truth in a similar manner, saying, quote, From Chicago tonight, jury selection is now underway in the trial of actor Jesse Smollett, charged with filing a false police report, claiming he was the victim of a racist and homophobic attack, including a noose around his neck. He was later accused of staging it. Two brothers, former extras on the program Empire, claim Smollett paid them to fake the attack. No mention of MAGA, no mention of Trump supporters. They can't say anything about that because it'll just remind people of why they shouldn't trust anything the media says. Jury selection and the trial of Jesse Smollett, the actor accused of staging a hate crime attack on himself. In Chicago, a jury was picked in the trial of actor Jesse Smollett. He is charged with six counts of felony disorderly conduct, accused of falsely telling police in 2019 that he was assaulted in a hate crime. In a controversial decision, earlier similar charges were dropped. Smollett has pleaded not guilty. Is there a little similarity there? Whoa, I think there is. Are you starting to notice a pattern here? Clearly, they're trying to scrub history and cover up their part in this charade. No mention of MAGA now, but back in 2019, they were like starving pit bulls on a piece of raw meat. If Smollett's story is found to be untrue, it will cause irreparable damage to the communities most affected. The incident would be touted as proof that there is a leftist conspiracy to cast Trump supporters as violent, murderous racists. Why do you think you were targeted? 45. I come really, really hard against his administration. Smollett is known for speaking out against racism and bigotry. He is also a frequent critic of the president. Today, the president was asked about the incident. He also said his attackers allegedly yelled MAGA country, a reference to President Trump's campaign slogan. He told police one of them put a noose around his neck and in a later interview said they yelled MAGA country. MAGA country. MAGA country. MAGA country. MAGA country comment. Two suspects who were apparently wearing Make America Great Again hat the men yelled, this is MAGA, make America great again country. His attackers also yelled, MAGA country, make America great again. And there is no doubt in your mind what motivated this attack. I could only go off of their words. What he said happened to him sort of fit in with a narrative, not a narrative, but a, a reality that there is a, an atmosphere of menace and an atmosphere of hate around the country that made it possible for people to re either readily believe or want to believe. Go ahead and add this on the ever-growing pile of proof that you shouldn't trust these people claiming to be news reporters and journalists when they're quite openly in the business of deception. Alrighty, well, if you'd like to support independent watchdogs like me, 
Go ahead and check out the description or pinned comment for a list of ways you can support this channel. You can donate on PayPal, you can subscribe on Patreon or Subscribestar, or you can try out Noble Gold, but make sure to tell them Drone Tech sent you. Every little bit helps and I really appreciate the support. Oh, and if you're interested in starting an emergency food storage, might as well buy it from a YouTuber that you want to support. Just go to preparewithdronetech.com and check out those deals. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments.